uh, not only was I coming in and, and sitting down and speaking with the teacher about, let's say, the, the marks that the child was getting, but uh, it exceeded my expectations around what was actually happening in the classroom. So uh, when, when my son opened up his portfolio, it seemed that he had examples of exactly what was happening in class and also the way it was assessed. And he had the, um, six, he called it success criteria in the checklist. He knew exactly what he needed to do. And on top of that, I mean, that's all him and that's what I care about. <laughs> but uh, as well as that, I watched as uh, he could relate directly to the, the feedback that the teacher had put on the bottom um, of most of his work samples and was not afraid to set sort of goals of what the next steps for, for him. And he was very, very specific about how he used it. And I mean, um, I got to see all the organizers and the steps and, for example, writing that, that he was doing. So uh, it was much more informative, not only about uh, your practice, but exactly what was happening with my son at the school. So I found it really beneficial. I would always think, okay, as long as we read a half an hour before bed and I say, did you do your homework? And he says, yes, I feel like we did a good job. But now specifically knowing what his goals are for writing, for when he's reading, for when he's doing math, I know how to help him a bit better. Right. So that was really beneficial too. It also shows that they get it. Yeah. I mean, they know they can explain That's everything right. about about their work. And then the, you know, we went over and we saw the, su the success criteria and she was able to explain to us how how she goes through and what the process is and you know she understands the whole thing the whole process right and with everything being said actually it also gave me a very clear direction as to you know which direction i should we as as a, as a parents should be heading um i had a good question for the teacher and i asked you like uh, what would be the next step my my son get, gets like you know great a's and b pluses and all that so what what is it going to take for him to get to the next level which would be like a plus or so and uh, there's a very good point that, that the teacher made is that you know he should think outside the box. Mm -hmm. So he should not just not execute, but we should help him to get to the next level. I Absolutely. found it very helpful to have um, a piece of paper with some questions that were provided to us from the teacher that helped me uh, ask her so that she was able to, I guess, think deeper about what she was right. presenting. But I think without that piece of paper, I probably wouldn't have come up with such lovely questions on my own. So yeah. I really liked that he got to select what he showed us. It wasn't just a, a checklist that teacher prepared. Mm -hmm. He prepared it. Right. So. Well, and then, and then I think we all talked about the, the checklist that the kids were going through and checking. But also one thing we forgot is that the teacher's, uh, the teacher's marking was there as well. So then the kids get to compare and their understanding of what they're learning and as, mm -hmm. as you said, they really get it. Um, they can go step by step to maybe improve because they have that uh, you know feedback from the teacher as well as making their own mind about what they thought they did. So. Well, I mean, it's uh, you see uh, a learning process uh, with uh, your child's eyes, you know, because uh, uh, not always do we get to uh, uh, come to a classroom and uh, uh, we see all the uh, all the environment and. Uh, uh, what is important for them and uh, how is everything uh, organized and uh, uh, really uh, feel different uh, what how they they go through uh, through this uh, uh, process how has the student-led conference helped you understand what happens in school um, I can say that I do see work that comes home during the school year so it's not really a surprise and I'm not learning what they're learning, but I do get a very good understanding about how they are able to seek information in the classroom, how, what anchor charts meet, mean to them, and that they understand where to go to solve a problem. Right. So it's not showing me the what, but it's really showing me the how. Right. And that's what I find. I would agree because um, at times the principal came in and sat down and was asking our son questions. Um, and he actually, you could see even during the conference, his eyes were wandering around the room to get help. Like we asked him, what, what type of text was that? And he was over there where it said, he didn't find it exactly, but he knew nonfiction was over there and he was looking for mystery. But everything that I saw in the portfolio, like I'm looking at uh, an example of a retail, and he was on text to text, right. but that just shows me, as she pointed out with him, um, that these are things that are done with the kids. So you'd like to think this is just like wallpaper, but they've actually worked through and, I don't know, I guess modeled for the kids exactly what it's supposed to look like. And when that happens, and then it's put up there, they did. They seem to know exactly where to go as a reference point. And I'm looking at like 
relate, reflect was in there. You've got the connections in there, and I mean, let alone the math and the success criteria, success yeah. criteria that's up there. Um, yeah, it's pretty apparent that everything in here uh, is used by the kids. It's mm -hmm. done for the kids, and it's done with the kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so there's a lot of meaning Absolutely. for the kids. They okay. big words are all around this mm -hmm. room, but they really do use them. They use them properly and they do know where to look to get that little bit of help. Right. So it was nice to see that. I think it just helps them become a more independent learner too. So it's not always asking questions and teachers telling me what to do. Because they can look around and see everything in here, it's got clues and reminders and things like that and helps them mm -hmm. work better independently, I'd say. Yeah. And I would even go as far to say that the, I guess the curriculum or the content, whatever you'd want to say is here, but then when you look that a kid has a checklist to see exactly what he needs to have in his work, he's also, he's also, or she's also, um, learning how to learn. So they're right. seeing how they learn best. They're having a reference point of what to check for, what they didn't have, and what they can improve on next time. So it, it, it seems that they're able to engage in that, this is how we learn, um, and sort of, I guess it's the assessment process of what the, the staff's going through. Right. Um, they're gonna get it. They're going to get it. It also shows us the difference between how that how it is now that they're in school and how it was back, you know, in the Stone <laughs> Ages yeah. when we were in school. Where they didn't which, tell you what you were learning. Seven. Well, well, you were you were you did a little bit of work, and you know, then it got marked, and you know, then you got as opposed to now where, you know, the the student is taking control of the process of their work, mm -hmm. and you know, you see the entire process of you start off with your rough copy, and then they take it to the next step they take it to the next step as, you know, without the teacher, you know, pretty much taking this, marking it, giving it back, move on to the next thing, which is yeah. what I remember. It's preparing them to be lifelong learners at a very early age. It's yeah. just Teachers becoming the, the norm. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And it's a process right from coming in from grade two. You know, this is, might not be something that they're completely used to. They're used to having more assistance from the teacher, whereas in grade three, we're really starting to build more of that independence and those learning skills so they're able to use them independently and use the resources in the classroom. It, I think it also gives a lot of uh, self-confidence and pride in, in what they're doing, mm -hmm. especially when they have their uh, published work up on the wall and then, you know, it's for the world to see uh, what they've been doing and, uh, you know, it's a good reflection for the parents uh, to look back into the child's work and. Uh, like like uh, uh, Paige's dad mentioned uh, that you know back back then when we went back to school, like uh, it was more of of a two ways. But I think here we have a, a three or four ways process where there's a good learning between the parents, the teachers, the children, um, mom and dad, and the resources that are available to the kids. So yeah. I think it's great. And mm. I know our daughter felt very proud to to show us her work, although we had seen it. Mm -hmm. And the rubric was signed by us and it was returned to school for whatever reason. She definitely just felt a lot more pride showing it to us in her classroom. Yeah. And I think she really enjoyed, she pointed out a book that the teacher had read previously uh, to start the idea process for the writing. So she was able to share that with us here, which she wasn't able to do at home. Mm -hmm. And what else do you think? Well, I think the whole, the confidence when she was speaking to us about her work and I think that's something that usually you never learn is the whole public speaking. You know, it's only to the parents, yeah. but you know, just speaking with confidence, you know, with power, because this is something that she has ownership of, and nobody could speak about her work better than she can. One of the biggest surprises that I had um, is when I noticed the ability of my son to analyze his own work. So at home when we do some writing, okay, homework's done and that kind of thing. But then to see him use the success criteria checklist, the teacher's feedback, and analyze his own work and say, well, you know, this was okay, mom, but next time I'm gonna do this. And my next step is this. It's, it was really nice to see him to be able to articulate that to us, but then to show how he's gonna improve next time. And I didn't do anything. I mean, he read it to me and he walked me through the checklist. I didn't even have to speak. So here's what I did, here's what I didn't do, and next time here's what I'm going to do. That whole whole process at grade three to hear a seven-year-old say that, it was really impressive. Right. So it was a big surprise to me, but something that I, um, um, that was really positive. Right. Okay. To piggyback on that, it will be interesting to see going forward the rest of the school year as different pieces are put into the portfolio, did they in fact use those next steps as critical feedback and did they apply it 
to their next piece of writing and how does their work evolve over the course of the school year mm -hmm. and over the course of their whole public school education up to grade eight because it's a cumulative thing and each assignment builds into the portfolio mm -hmm. and you can reflect back on last year's work and right. it's a really interesting process. It's like a scrapbook in the making yeah. from grade one to eight. I think it was, a, it was a big paradigm shift in my way of thinking as well mm -hmm. because I have you know, um, younger children Mm -hmm. uh, who are after Nishant, and uh, you know, I probably would uh, give them a good head start from the very beginning itself, right? right? And the you know, like you, the, the question was like whether uh, you know whether he changed my way of thinking or not. It did for sure, because the, the day that he came and he said, you know, Dad, I've been selected for this uh, this conference, student conference, and to demonstrate uh, what not, you know, that filled me uh, with a sense of pride mm -hmm. uh, on my child, and uh, definitely, you know. You've, He's, I think he's doing a great job, and uh, I would uh, probably take that forward uh, to my next children. So. Yeah. The other nice thing about student-led conferences is, as you know, we're all multitasking at home. A lot of us have, you know, jobs, being parents, and having outside jobs. So there's no um, cooking being done at the same time as talking about their learning. There's no, you know. Yeah. So it really is focus time, and I think that the kids appreciate the fact that we're here really focusing just on them, not their siblings, not the, the, the pot that's Sorry. boiling on the stove. Yeah. So that um, we're captive audiences, and I right. think the kids really like that. They do appreciate the one-on-one. -on -one. And I also think it's not, it's not only the fact that, uh, that, that our son, no one has seen an improvement, but when we were reluctant, because now he's in grade three, he's doing more independent at re reading, we wanted to come in, okay, is, is everything okay? Is everything working? Everything that you saw at the student-led conference is exactly at that time what the teacher was able to produce. So it's informing her practice all the time about what he needs to do, um, but in fact, whatever's happening, I think it's the biggest thing is what he's reading and writing and engaged in, he really likes it, like it's kind of authentic, so he moves ahead and does it. Uh, we've seen a big uh, engagement piece is really different for him in class and an improvement that's that's huge. We were really impressed with because he's back on track and where he should be for reading now. Now that building on what you said, I've learned some terms like success criteria, even connections and things like that. Sometimes he'd come home and say, uh, you, know, you know, I did my homework, but here here's my assignment. I, I didn't do so well. Now I can say, well, let's go back and let's pull out your success criteria. Let's go over the checklist. And when he checks the no, I didn't do, okay, I can ask him, so next time, what are you gonna do differently? Instead of just, oh, that's okay, you know, you can try harder and I'm sure you'll do better. But now I can say, okay, specifically, when you get an assignment like this, how are we gonna help you do better? So that was a big eye opener for me too. I've got to, oh, sorry, I've got to say that there's a specific situation in this class that we're gonna deal with in the next little while. And I've seen uh, that everything is explicit. Now tell me that the planning that's gone on for this will continue. So as the teacher will you know, move out and have her baby, and a new teacher will come in, it gives me a little bit more confidence that the learning in this class is so ex explicit that not only do, is the teacher coming in going to have to be accountable, but as parents, I think we really know what's going to happen and we have a higher expectation of what's going to happen with that term teacher or whoever's going to come in. So that's something that's been in the back of my mind and I almost think that I feel a little bit better about that now, knowing what I know here and knowing what's expected at the school of that teacher and to see that there's going to be some consistency in what's happening in the teaching of my child. And another thing I can speak to is now that I know that reading is more than just sounding at the words. <laughs> Um, I can help my child by talking about the main ideas of the story, the characters, the making connections. Because mm -hmm. I don't know that it was so clear to me before that making connections which is an integral part of reading and that it helps kids understand the text more. I, I mean, we as adults do it automatically. And I don't think I've ever stopped to think about, oh yeah, it really does help understanding the text better. So I think the focus at home can change a little bit. Not by just saying, come on, we've got to read what we read, sound out the word. Now it can be a dialogue yeah. about the book, about the main idea, and helping the child get the big idea out of the, the text. Right. Yeah, these kids, uh, they seem to know that they really have to think during reading. I mean, it was no mm -hmm. with the, right. the principal who said, you know, he basically said, oh, that's something about, that's just a literal connection. So if I have, you know, if I have a dog and the person in the story has a dog, that doesn't really improve my reading. But he went, oh, I forget the talk. We were speechless. Yeah, the language, <laughs> the language that he used to explain what a deeper connection was, 
was important because it wasn't about the connection. It was about how the connection helped the, the kid understood, yeah. understand what he read. And make it meaningful and we, to we were never taught that. We were taught that as you're reading, you're thinking, you know, and, and, and learning. What had, I just thought that kids could read. Well, they just could read and I couldn't do it very well and it took a lot more work. <laughs> but uh, this is, uh, it's pretty powerful stuff. I was also impressed by this correlation in what they learned between, you know, you use the mainly the usage of the million dollar words. Right. <laughs> yes. and, you know, I and they're not even hundred dollar words anymore. Yeah, it makes the story so descriptive. You know, with with both our kids, you read their stories, and it's not, you know, one day I went for a walk. It's one beautiful sunny day. I went for a stroll. Yeah. You know, and. You know. And then we can connect it back to how that helps them become better readers because yeah. you can visualize right. when you use million dollar words <laughs> and can your yeah. audience visualize so it really helps them sure. understand what they need to do to improve their writing. Or in reading, yeah. like, that's, like that's writing, but I'm sure like in the class they show them prime examples and model for them all the descriptive language you said in, in a reading piece so they can learn that and carry it over to their writing. Right. So it's pretty solid. How do you know if the student-led conference was a success? The smile on her face. <laughs> really, pride? that's what yeah. it's all about. For us, pride. that's what it's about. It's the pride and the giving her the 15 minutes of fame and um, just no interruptions and focus completely on her. She was just very proud and smiley and happy, and she thanked us a lot of times, yeah. taking yeah. time out of our busy schedules to come here to focus on her. So that was, yeah. was cute. If we need to talk to the teacher, we, we can do that anytime. And, you know, or if you could just back and forth in the agenda. So the communication with the teacher is, happens anyways. But to be able to have, you know, our daughters sit here and show us her work and show us with pride and talk about, you know, this, her favorite part, you know, whatever different uh, mm -hmm. writing piece it was, whether it was a favorite part or, you know, any piece. And, she, you know, you can just see the pride, and that's really what it's all about. Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of the day, to see that coming out of your child is, yeah, it's wonderful. And I noticed another thing is that my son took me right away to the tribbles and said that, okay, you know, this is the phase that I'm looking <laughs> at. <laughs> you you yeah. found out what they're called. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it was a smiley face all across, and uh, uh, that was that was a great pointer that it was a good success. And uh, in days to come, it's going to show me how good it is. So oh. I think as uh, for the first step, it was great, and as for the few steps that are you know, soon to follow up to that. So. Uh, I, I would agree. I would think that student-led conferences seems to be like one of the things to just exemplify the work that's happening by the kids and the teacher. But for us, I think uh, we're talking about a student that, you know, maybe wasn't getting the, the A's that we've talked about around here, but something has made a difference through this process in the beginning of this year in his engagement and his interest in, in what he's actually doing. And I think that has to be part of it has to be is that intrinsic motivation of wanting to do better which I know he has but knowing what to do to do better seems to be really powerful for him he loves it here when we came in to talk to the teacher she talked to him about you know one of the you know most engaged kids and he's doing and, and for us from the feedback that we had in previous years we were like great we walked out and we're like yahoo uh, I think it's you know it's important to have them involved in their learning and in, in the assessment as you said um, I think that the student-led conference was successful for me too because personally I feel better equipped for helping support his learning at home and like I said before we always said let's do homework let's do our reading and then go to bed and that's it but now I specifically understand on how to help him better so when he's frustrated I could use language that I heard today well let's go back to your success criteria or even just being able to ask about what kind of connection and things like that. So I just feel more confident on how I can help him continue to grow at home. What I have noticed is that there is technology set up around the classroom and I've got just a couple of things to, to comment about that. First of all, I'm thinking it probably helps a lot of children, even children who might be, you know, have some special needs. And it's also, they're different children today. They grow up with technology. Um, my children who are grade two and three understand um, emailing and they understand how to search for some ideas on the internet which is something that yeah. you know came about in our 20s so it was very interesting to see it be such a natural part of their environment right. and it uh, it made me really happy and excited to see that they have the opportunities to use such incredible programs and to set up amazing stories when the kids were reading their stories on the on the computer and they were reading with expression and there were pictures that went with it. 
it's a, it made it look like a little movie that they produced, and that was really interesting to see. It just made me think when you said that, it was so funny, the feeling and sort of the shift as soon as we walked through the door, that it was very clear this was now our son Noah, this was Noah's place. Right. So we now kind of shifted hats, and it's okay, now yeah. you're quiet, Mom, and I'm going to show you everything. <laughs> and it was really nice that the conference was in his place. He, sh he knew exactly what to do, this is my desk, and again, that sense of pride you talked about, that this is where I spend my time, this is my you know, this book, that kind of thing. And even when he walked us around, it was almost like he was wearing the parent hat and we were the child and he was teaching us what he does every day. So it was really um, beneficial for us to take the time and to come into his place to, so he can show us where his learning happened. They were very comfortable in the sense that I watched the set. He, uh, he led you right across to show his example of work on the wall. But when they, they were so organized with, uh, I guess they called it their browsing, browsing boxes, they knew where everything was, and they were yeah, they were super confident and just comfortable mm -hmm. in leading us around uh, um, all of their work. Yeah. Well, it's funny we all have you know a workplace where you go from nine to five, and you know this is you know here's where you do this and different place, and this is their workplace, yeah. and this is where they come. They come here for six hours a day, seven you know, seven hours a day by the time they uh, they get dressed to leave. <laughs> <laughs> so. Now you can see what they are what they are doing. This is their place, and you're being invited into their place, which is a huge part of their lives. You figure if they spend eight hours a day sleeping, you know this is this is almost half their day is spent here at the school, and now you uh, you have better insight as to who they are and how they feel while they're here at the school. At times the principal came in and sat down and was asking her some questions um, and he actually, you could see even during the conference, his eyes were wandering around the room to get help and we asked him mm -hmm. what, what type of text was that and he was over there where it said, he didn't find it exactly but he knew nonfiction was over there and he was looking for mystery. But everything that I saw in the portfolio, like I'm looking at uh, an example of a retail and he was on text to text, right. but that just shows me, as she pointed out with him, um, that these are things that are done with the kids. So you'd like to think this is just like wallpaper, but they've actually worked through and, I don't know, I guess modeled for the kids exactly what it's supposed to look like. And when that happens, and then it's put up there, they did, they seem to know exactly where to go as a reference point. And I'm looking at like, Relate, Reflect was in there, you've got the connections in there, and I mean, let alone the math and the success criteria, success yeah. criteria that's up there. Um, yeah, it's pretty apparent that everything in here uh, is used by the kids. It's done for the kids, and it's done with the kids. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of meaning That's for right. the kids. They okay. Big words are all around this mm -hmm. room, but they really do use them. They use them properly, and they do know where to look to get that little bit of help. Right. So it's nice to see that. Yeah. It just helps them become a more independent learner, too. So it's not always asking questions and teacher telling me what to do because they can look around and see everything in here. It's got clues and reminders and things like that and helps them mm -hmm. work better independently, I'd say. Yeah. And I would even go as far to say that the, I guess the curriculum or the content, whatever you'd want to say, is here. But then when you look that a kid has a checklist to see exactly what he needs to have in his work, he's also, he's also or she's also, um, learning how to learn. So they're okay. seeing how they learn best. They're having a reference point of what to check for, what they didn't have, and what they can improve on next time. So it, it, it seems if they're able to engage in that, this is how we learn, um, and sort of I guess it's the assessment process of what the, the staff's going through, okay. um, they're going to get it. They're going to get it. Also
when my son opened up his portfolio is see that he had examples of exactly what was happening in class and also the way it was assessed and he had the um, six, he called it success criteria in the checklist he knew exactly what he needed to do and on top of that I mean that's all him and that's what I care about <laughs> but uh, as well as that I watched as uh, he could relate directly to the the feedback that the teacher had put on the bottom um, of most of his work samples and was not afraid to set sort of goals of what the next steps were for him and he was very very specific about how he used it and I mean 